me to ask. Now, what I want to say is that we have four days, but it's not sufficient to give you all my teachings. But, you know, I hope that you have this mind that this teaching is not just a sermon. It's a teaching, if you find it is good for you, that you will keep for your whole lifetime and to spread to other people. I chose this teachings because this teaching can impact our life and then we can raise up the spiritual life of people and then we can train people to serve God. My goal is that we raise up more people who love God. First, it's very important to have a close relationship with God. And then we have good relationship with people. And then we learn a skill how to relate to people and counsel people and how to raise up the spiritual life and train people and then we raise up people who are steady in the church to help the church to grow and also to bring a revival to the land to this country and to all countries to prepare for the second coming of Jesus. When I go to different places, I found that many Christians are lukewarm or living in sin. I've talked with Washington and also some of the people to find out the, you know, the condition of the Christians here. I'm sad to hear that adultery is common here in Africa. And then also even Christians, they will fall into adultery and even Christians don't find adultery to be you know something God hates now adultery could lead to loss of salvation and if Christians are in adultery they have no strength but if they have a close relationship with God and love God and obey God and are trained to serve God they can train other people and encourage other people to serve God so that we have more people who love God thank you Thank you very much, I, but I won't take it. I will give it to them for the offering. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Okay, so my heart is that when Jesus comes back, yes, he will say to many people, you are good and faithful servants. Do you want Jesus to praise you like that? Yes. But Jesus will say to many Christians, you're lazy and wicked servants. Mm. And even to many, he said, he will say, I don't know you. Mm. So I, I really pray for a revival of the spiritual life and ministry. So I hope that you will take notes. Now if your cell phone is capable, you can record also. 
Now actually if you bring a computer I can put all my videos into your computer If you take your laptop here My goal is that you will keep this teaching for yourself and your members and then for revival each one of this is carefully designed. And then the first teaching I'm giving today is how to live in the grace and the love of God all the time. And the distinction between the grace of God and the law. It's very important to distinguish the grace and the law. Now I want to first say this, that most people, or almost all people, live under the law. When we grow up, people will tell us, if you're good, I like you. If you are not good, nobody likes you. And then we find that we try to be good in some areas. And then they will say, well, you're not good in these other areas. And people always seem that they want to find faults with us. Now even as pastors, the members won't tell you how good you are. They will tell you what some areas you're not doing so well. Or some areas the church is not so good. Now, and also for many leaders, they have a tendency to, this, to, to look at, oh, these members are weak. So people are always having a feeling, I'm not doing well enough. And it's hard to please God. I want to tell you that when we live under the grace, we can enjoy the love of God all the time, and also be motivated to obey God in every way. Not because of pressure, but because of God's love. Now, now, people might think, when I believe in Jesus, I'm living under the grace. According to the biblical teaching, that's true. But many people, even as Christians, they will keep saying, I'm not good enough. I don't, I don't pray enough. I don't obey enough. I don't serve enough. And then also, many Christians have this tendency. Those Christians are not good enough. And the pastor is not good enough. So always look at people with the eyes of the law. Now let me tell you, I see the faults of people. But I always have this heart. People are precious in the sight of God. Anytime they say, I'm sorry for my sins. I want to turn away from sins. God is very happy. Even though he might have weaknesses. But when we say, Lord, I'm sorry. When we are sincerely sorry. God is very happy. And even when we give a cup of cobalt to a little one, out of a pure heart of love, Jesus said, you by no means lose your reward. 
So Jesus is saying, whatever you do, even a little thing for me, I will remember you. Yes, you know, I found that it's easier to please God than to please people. Now, God's level is very, very high. No one can be perfect in front of God. So some people take that to mean that no one is good enough, so I will tell everyone you are not good enough. But the point is, anytime I'm not good enough, I ask God to forgive me. And then anything I obey God, I will love for God. He is very happy. Then we can say every day, when I repent, God is very happy. When I pray to God, when I love God, God is very happy. When I obey God and serve God, God is very happy. Then we are more relaxed and happy. Now, we are not perfect yet. But anything we do for God, He is very happy. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That way you feel free <laughs> and joyful. <laughs> and then you come across Christians, they are weak. And then I will say to them, God loves you and cares about you. God is a wonderful plan in your life. God wants to do great things in your life. And any sin we have will destroy this relationship with God. Sins are like cancer. Are you willing to repent to God? And hate his sins and give up the sins and love God and obey Him and any little thing you do for God God is very happy so it's not hard for you to follow God totally and then you can enjoy God's love every day now I hope you see the difference when people say you're not good enough you have done, you have served God, but you know, you are not doing well enough. You haven't brought enough people to Jesus. Your church has not grown. So God doesn't like you. Now if, you, if people talk to you like that, or if you talk to yourself like that, or your husband or wife talk to you like that, you know, I knew a pastor. He said, every time I preach, my wife will criticize me heavily. <laughs> I will feel very bad every time after I preach. <laughs> it doesn't build him up. <laughs> it makes him feel discouraged. <laughs> you know, the Bible is full of the grace of God. Now, when I say all this, I don't mean I give up the law. I really obey God totally. Any moment I have any sinful thought, if I dislike someone, immediately I take care of that. And I want to forgive and accept the person and bless the person. Anytime I have any lust, I will say I hate the sin. I don't want any part of the sin. And I want to be holy and clean. And then I obey God totally. Let me tell you, I'm 66 years old. I'm still strong. <laughs> and God gives me the motivation. If God gives me 100 years, 
I will serve till 100. I want to do anything for God because God is the best Lord. Anything we do for Him is very happy. When I can bless people, I'm very happy. So every day I live happily. I enjoy ministry. I enjoy God. And I enjoy seeing people change. That way you enjoy ministry. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Okay. Now, now I'm going to talk about the love of God. I will post some verses. After I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998, when the evangelist Ellis, uh, Carlos Anacondia from Argentina, um, South America, when he laid hand on me and I felt power like electricity enter me and instantly I felt a strong infilling of the love of God. I was so greatly touched by the love of God I cried for a long time and I said, Lord, I didn't know I can have a close relationship with you like that. And I kept loving God ever since then. Now, at that time, I had been a pastor for 15 years already. Yeah. But my life was totally changed at that point. And I want to spend time loving God every day and believing in God's love. And a second thought came to me at that time. If that evangelist has this power of the Holy Spirit, it's from God. I want to have that too. So I can bless other people. So my life was totally changed. And then when I pray, I can experience the joy of the Lord every time I pray. And experience His power going through my whole body and His love overwhelming me. It's possible to have this close relationship. And then when I read the Bible, I have new lights. I can see God's love so well. And then when I enjoy God's love more, and appreciate God's love more, my life is changed more and more. And when people hear how I describe the love of God, many people said, I never thought of the relationship with God to be so intimate. So hope, so hope, hallelujah. So I hope you are prepared for that. God is love. You, you know, many people know that God, for God so loved the world. But many people think of God's love as being far away. And think of God's love as loving a whole crowd, big crowd of people. So he really doesn't see me. And really doesn't love me intimately. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that he loves every single person very intimately. And he wants us to have that intimate love with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 49 verse 15. 
Can a mother forget the baby in her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? So she may forget, I will not forget you. Abuza and mama, asoro kwe abiro mana guayonsa, nari okanda muti nebo amera bira, nze sinza kumera bira. Hallelujah. Amen. How many mothers are here? How many mothers are here? Bameko na abali baza de kumana. How many mothers? Mothers. Mama yende yazara kumana. Okay. How many fathers are here? Fathers. Okay. See Father Christmas. Okay. Now let me ask you, have you forgotten your baby somewhere? You took the baby somewhere and then you you bought something and then after you buy the thing and then you forgot the baby. There. Have you taken a bus and then you left the baby in the bus? And God says, even if you forget your baby, I will not forget you. Now, do we believe the Bible? Yes. Yes. And also, do you find the Bible true? Yes. yes. You know, I have heard from many Christians. They say that they have been weak in the past. They forgot to pray. And they fall into sin. They, they said, you know, they said that God kept reminding me of God, the relationship with God. And God kept touching the heart to draw them back to Him. So even when they are weak and sinful, God doesn't give them up. God is thinking about them. God, Jesus is praying for us all the time. And he wants to draw us back to him. So, when we remember the days when we were weak, we will feel the moving of the Holy Spirit to draw us back to him. And then Bible verses will come to our mind. And then when we come to God, we can experience Him. When we praise Him, we can experience His joy and His love again. So we find that when we are weak or strong, God is still ministering to us. Of course, when we are close to him, then God can move in our heart more uh, strongly. For the Bible says that for high as the heaven is above the earth, so great is my love toward those who fear him. When we honor him and respect him and love him, his Love is beyond the heavens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you jump to touch the top of the of this tent? Can you touch it? Can you touch it? Can you touch it? Can you jump to the top of a tree? Can you jump to the top of a tree? Can you jump to the top of a mountain? Can you jump to the moon? Let me tell you, even the moon is not as high as the heaven. Even if you can jump to the sun, the love of God is, the love of God is greater than that. And you know that he's remembering us all the time. He remembers with grace and love. Like a mother remembering the child. The mother is not angry with the child. 
The mother wants to bless the child. Now you might say there are Bible verses that God said God is angry with the Israelites. Only the Pharisees. Now it's true. You know, because of the sin, God is God doesn't like the sin. But you notice that God's anger is for those who don't love God and don't follow God. Now, even when the disciples were weak, Jesus did not, you know, deny them and, you know, did not hate them and be angry with them. I quote you this verse, Luke 22, verse 32. In that instance, Jesus told Peter, Satan is trying to sift you, like sifting the wheat. And later he told him he was going to deny him three times. Now this is terrible for Peter because he has followed Jesus for three years. He knew that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus has already also told him that, you know, I'll build a church on you, this foundation. But he was about to deny Jesus three times. <laughs> Jesus did not say to him, Peter, how can you do that? You're good for nothing. You're you follow me three years and you deny me how can you build up the church? Now Jesus did not say that. In Luke chapter 22 verse 32 there Jesus said but I pray for you Simon that your faith may not fail Amen. and when you have turned back Strengthen your brothers. Now the first thing Jesus told him was, I have prayed for you. Now praying means a heart of love and concern. Jesus did not say, I rebuilt you. He was saying, I pray for you. That means he has love and concern for Peter. So that you will not lose your faith. So the goal of Jesus' prayer is that so that he will be strengthened. And if, when you turn back, strengthen your brothers. So he trusts in, G, in Peter that he will carry out the ministry. Even when Peter was about to deny him three times. So we see that in the Bible, Jesus, you know, God only rebuke, you know, dislike, hate the people who you know, who reject him, but he still loved them. You know, he hated the sin, but he still loved them. Now, he has pointed out the lack of faith of the disciples. He said, you know, you are, you are of little faith. But then he did not say, you are no use because you have little faith. He always gives them hope. He said, though you might have faith like a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. So have you noticed that when Jesus speaks, it's always our a heart of blessing people. Except for the people who are you know against him, and then he would rebuke them and then point out the sins so that they will repent. Now 
Even when Judah was about to, you know, to betray him, Jesus said, you know, it is better that this person doesn't live on earth. He did not say to Judah, you know, you are so terrible, so terrible. When he said, it's better that this man is not born on earth. It's telling Judah, you still have a chance to repent. Jesus still gives him hope to warn him, you know, you have this last chance. Now even for the Israelites, when he went to Jerusalem, he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Yes, we again have Yerusalem, Yagam, but Yerusalem, Yerusalem. You have rejected the prophets I've sent to you. Mm. And you've killed those who have been sent to you. But I want to gather you like a hen gathering the chicken. Mm. But you're not willing. So even when the Israelites were rejecting Jesus, he still said, I try to gather you like a hen trying to gather a chicken. Now if you look at a hen, you know, protecting the chicken. One time I went to a place and saw a hen and sleeping. And then I found that under the wing there was a big chicken. Now, the hen was about this size. The chicken was about this size. And the chicken was still <laughs> sleeping under the wing of the mother. The hen always had this heart to protect the children. So God always had this heart to gather us to Him. Now He was born the people who sin and reject Him. He hates that sins. But he doesn't hate them. He point out the sins, the consequence of the sin. Now you look through the Bible, you find that God speaks grace all the time. Okay, now this verse, Psalm 139 verse 5. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. So what it says is God said he's in front of me and behind me and he's laying his hand upon us. So what it says is that God is with us all the time. Now how do we know God is with us all the time? As I said, when we sin, he moves in our heart. And then when we love him and praise him, do you feel joy and peace? Raise your hand. If you do, if you feel the peace of the Lord, the joy of the Lord when you pray to him, you know, that is God coming to you, blessing you with his love and joy. So he's with us all the time. He is not far away. He's very close to us. And if you have learned to love the Lord with your heart, with your spirit, like me when I sh think of God anytime, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Anytime you think of Jesus, his joy will come to me. And I hope you will learn this. That you really love God. And believe in God's love. Oh, and then we can enjoy his love. But many Christians, because they have been raised up by the law, 
People will spank them and punish them. You're no good. Even in a church. Sometimes Christians or even ministers sometimes will tell each other, you're not obeying God, you're no, you know, you're not doing well. Very often people just tell people, you should pray, you should love God, you should obey God. This is, this is all the law. It's right to tell the law to the people, it's right. But it's right, you know, it's the best to tell them the grace of God first. To motivate people. For instance, when Jesus tells us, don't worry and trust in God, and trust in His provision. How did Jesus teach that? He did not just say, you worry too much, just trust in God, God will provide for you. He didn't say like that. He said, look at the sparrows. They did not sow and reap. But God provide for them. And you are more precious than a sparrow. So God is... God doesn't just say, don't worry, don't worry, trust in me. He didn't just say that. He would say, He would say, how I provide for the sparrow, for the lily. So he's telling, he's telling them the grace of God, how he's blessing the people. Wow. And then, you know, you're more precious, so yeah. don't worry. So Jesus was motivating people to trust in him by telling them, you know, how you know how God is caring for each one of us. And when God motivates people to read the Bible and meditate on the Bible, and then he said, blessed is he who meditate, you know, is delighted with the Bible, you know, scripture and meditate on it day and night. He's like a tree planted on a riverside and has fruits all the time and the leaves don't wither. So he motivates people to read the Bible by telling them, you know, if a person reads the Bible, the grace of God will be so strong upon him that he will be like a tree planted by the riverside. And everything it does will be prosperous. So this is motivating them by the grace of God. Now I motivate people to pray like this. I would say, you know, in uh, James chapter 4, verse 2, it says that the Holy Spirit yearns for us like, you know, with jealousy. Yours for us, he, you know, he loves us with jealousy. That he loves us so much. If he loved the world more, he's jealous. There are so many, many Christians. But God hungers for the love of each Christian. So anytime you pray to Jesus, Jesus will be very happy. In Chinese we have this saying, 
that someone is laughing, sh someone is showing showing the mouth but not the eyes. It's like this. <laughs> it's, it's smiling so, <laughs> so that you don't see the eyes but you see the mouth. <laughs> that you see the teeth and not the eyes. And I will tell them, you know, every <laughs> time you pray to God, <laughs> you see the teeth of Jesus, but not the eyes. <laughs> so you see, whenever you pray to him, he will pour blessings upon you. He will bless you. And strengthen you. And the Bible, Bible. the way people to read the Bible. The Bible is full of the promises of God. When you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. So the Bible is full of promises. When we seek his kingdom, we want to you know bring the kingdom of God to more people. That's the, that's the first meaning of the seeking the kingdom is to bring people in the kingdom of God to believe in Jesus and the second meaning is that let the kingdom of God come into our hearts the kingdom of God is where God rules if God speaks to you every time you obey, the kingdom of God is in your heart. He's the king in your heart. Now when you live like that, and also seek his righteousness, that means to obey him, all these things will be added to you. Let me tell you, I thank God for his provision for me. So I can go to different countries to bless the people. Now when I have these provisions, my ministry is all for free. Whether in Hong Kong my ministry, I don't receive salary. Because God has provided for me, I don't receive salary. And when I go to different places, I don't ask them to support my ministry here. I pay for it. I want to bless the people. But I also like the people to take up responsibility, like paying for part of the meal, if, they, if it's possible. It's not for me. But the expenses is paid by our organization and paid by me. Because God has blessed us so much, we want to bless people. I don't want to take any more. I find that when I seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, all these things will be added to me. So I hold on to the promises of God. God is in front of me and behind me and He's laying His hand upon me. And I remember that all the time, every time I pray, I say, God, you're right here, and you're listening to my prayer. When I love you, you are very happy. So I always remember these promises. That's why I have strength all the time. So I encourage people, the more you read the Bible, the more you are encouraged. And also you hold on these promises. Your whole life will be blessed. So that's how I motivate people to love God and to obey God and to read the Bible. So I, and I hope you understand the difference. If I use an illustration of two persons in love, now when you find two young people in love, you notice that you know anyone of the of the couple that love each other, they will think about their person all the time. 
They always want to find time to see each other. Because they know the other person like him or her. So they have the motivation to see each other and to love each other. But for many people change when they get married. When you get married, they're happy the wife goes away to her home and I can be alone <laughs> for a few days. And then very often when they talk to each other, they will say, you didn't wash the dishes. You, you, you know, you didn't take, you didn't talk to me. You're not nice to me. You, you know this is always the law. You didn't do it. But when they were in love, they always remember the other person and they like the other person. They enjoy anything the person does. What's the difference? Because when they fall in love, they are living in grace. They always care for each other. But when they have a steady relationship, very often they will say things like, why didn't you call me yesterday? They might lose motivation. Because the human nature is not to give. The human nature is what can I get from the relationship? And what happens is when they always demand the other person to do something and accuse the other person. What happened? The person, the other person will get turned off. It become pressure. Let me tell you, many, many Christians' relationship with God is like that. It's like pressure. They will say, I have a lot of things to do in my home. And I have to read the Bible and have to pray. And have to obey the Bible. And have to come to church. And have to give time. I have to do all these things. It's too heavy. When they don't have love, the love of God, it all becomes responsibilities. But when we have love, it's very different. Now let me tell you how I look at my wife. Now most people who get married don't look at a wife like that. Yeah, it's hard for you to see maybe here. Now. But I have, I have her picture all in this cell phone. Oh, very good. Okay. Let me, let me, let me tell you. I see my wife as the most precious person on earth. Why is she the most precious person on earth? Because she really loves me and cares for me. She wants the best to happen to me. And we communicate every day. Now when I have a wife like that, do I want to treasure that? So I enjoy everything she does for me. Yes. And also I would try my best to love her in every way. Because in that way I can keep her as my close companion. And then my marriage and my whole life will be blessed. And he's, she's supportive for my ministry. And I enjoy her all the time. Isn't that good? When I enjoy her love, that's like grace. 
I receive the grace from her. Yeah, this is human grace. And then I love her. That is the law. That way I keep the relationship. And my whole person is blessed. The same with my relationship with Christians, with pastors. Whatever I can do for people, I always do. Because of my videos online, you can see my videos on YouTube. Look, look for Pastor Yip, YIP. YIP, say to them. Yeah, Yipa. Yeah. Yipa. And then also on Facebook, Pastor Yip. It's on Facebook right now. You, you can see many of my videos in Chinese, but also quite a number in English too. And many people, many people came to me for help. And when I can, I always help them. And there are people who always come to my group in uh, in Hong Kong for prayer for deliverance. And I'm always happy to bless them. Because I live in the love of God. I enjoy the love of God. God is the best person in my whole life. I want to make God very happy. I want to do everything that pleases God. Because God is the best in my life. Is God the best in your life? Has He blessed you in many ways? Do you do you treasure the relationship? Do you say to him all the time, You are my best. You are my everything. When I have you, I have everything. I want to love you and obey you. What I want to say is, when we live in the love of God, then we, if we treasure this love, then we have the motivation to love God and obey God. Now there are many Christians and even pastors they will say I have to serve God. I have to help all these people. They don't listen to me. I still have to work hard. I want Jesus to come back soon. So I don't have to work anymore. Then it becomes like the law. Let me ask you. Do you sometimes serve like that? <laughs> do you sometimes pray like that? Why do I have to pray so much? It seems a long time already I pray. Oh, it's only five minutes, ten minutes. How can I pray longer? Now for many people, oh, reading the Bible is so boring. Now for many people, it's pressure. But when I pray, I said, God is very happy. And I, and I, can, and I can experience peace and joy. <laughs> now when I experience this peace and joy and love, I see this as this expression of God's love. God is loving me. So I enjoy God. Yes, in the morning, yes, at the noon time, yes, 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 when the sun goes down. Hallelujah.
Now when we pray like this, thinking of enjoying God's love, living in God's love, and God is very happy, and God is pleased with me and He'll bless me, it's like having our first love. Isn't that very different? But some people pray like this. God, do you hear my prayer? I have no money. Please help me. I have no husband, no wife. Please provide for me. I need you. But you are far away. God, where are you? When people don't have faith, when people don't have faith, they always think of God as being far away. Because without faith, it's hard to please God. It's hard to please God. When they don't believe God is right here, when people don't believe God is loving us, it's hard to have strength. And they say, God, where are you? I need money. I need help. But you're not helping me. But people look at troubles. When they look at troubles, then we don't have faith. And it's hard to experience God. Let me tell you, it's like human relationship. If you know someone very well, it's easy to talk with the person. But if someone is far from God, it's hard to pray. How do we see God's love? Many people say, how do we see God's love? Write this down. Five areas. First area is from nature we can see God's love. Do you like food? Food, the taste of food, do you like it? Do you like, to eat? do you like to eat? Food tastes good, right? Yes. Because God created food to be delicious for us. God doesn't God doesn't create yucky food. Now, I use an illustration, hope you don't mind. If eating food is like eating tongue, bad smell, bad taste, but if our life depends on it, we still have to eat. <laughs> but God created food not like tongue, right? <laughs> Watch that. Let me talk because I also need to enjoy the God created the water. You will pray. Yeah, and yes. water. You drink, the water. <laughs> you drink the water? Oh, uh, it tastes good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have as you Kenya. <laughs> and look at our body. Look at our body. We can see the color around us because of the eyes. And we can sing. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes. We can sing. And we can hear music. We can smell good food. You can smell a baby. You like to smell a baby? You can smell the flowers. Isn't God wonderful to create all these things? From nature. Second, from Jesus' crucifixion. Did Jesus, did Jesus have to die for us? Can you imagine a king send his son to die for you? I mean, would a king send a son to die for you? No. 
But God sent His Son who is enjoying heaven. And Jesus was willing to come to die for us. And on the cross He was separated from the Father. Mm. He said, Father, he, no, he didn't say, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's separated from God so that we can come to God. Number three, from the Bible. You can see so many Bible verses about the love of God. Number four, when we pray or praise God, you can experience His love. And also in our daily life, we can enjoy, you know, like for instance, you are in difficulty, you ask God for help, you can experience God's help. Let me ask you, how many of you have experienced help from God when you pray to Him and ask Him to help you? I hope you remember all this. Let me tell you, three times I was almost killed in a car accident. And the last time, you know, my the car, my car and the other person's car is so close to each other. I thought, I said to Jesus, I didn't know I'm coming to you so soon because it's so close. I thought we're going to hit. But in the last moment, I don't know how the car can turn away in the last moment. And I said, thank God that you give me this life again. Now one time I was, I was coming to Africa. I counted the time wrongly. And I missed a plane. And then I asked the person at the counter. She said the plane has left already, you have to rebook the ticket. So I went to the rebooking counter. And she said, the plane has left you. And then also you bought the ticket in Hong Kong, you have to call Hong Kong to rebook the ticket. And I call Hong and I called Hong Kong, the person said, this is difficult. And I pray to God. God with you, everything is possible. I have experienced so many miracles. Please, Lord, perform a miracle. And I went up to the counter again. And asked him to make a phone call to find out again. What can be done? And I didn't expect that answer. When she made the phone call, her eyes were wide open. How can that be? And then she told me, the plane has come back. <laughs> and I asked the people in the plane what happened in the plane. The person said the plane just could not take off. They try again and again. And finally the plane came back. Ooh. And the person said, You don't have to rebook your ticket. And then I told my wife, my wife said, God really loves you. <laughs> now all this I remember. Everything God has done for me. Two times I was almost hit in my eyes. One time it was a pair of scissors that hit here. And one time it was a plan with four that hit me to the side of my eye. Then I both eyes now, I thank God for that. Do you remember all the times that God has helped you? 
Do remember those and say God really loves me. So from all this thing we can see God's love. Now how about our relationship with the love of God? Let me tell you. You can write this down. The first level. Some people just know God's love. They just know. But nothing more. The second level. Believe in God's love. Believe. That means I really believe God loves me. Now you ask questions. Do you believe that God loves you? They say yes. They say yes. But then if something happened to them. For instance, if they lose their health, they lose a lot of money, they lose a church, many Christians will say, God doesn't love me now. The third level is believe in God's love even in difficulties. You know, I had difficult times myself. And I, in those times I said, God still loves me. I continue to hold on to God. God will bless me for sure. Now those days are the days that God has trained me to have faith in Him. And number four, is experience God's love. Now actually, we all can experience God's love when we eat. But, but many people don't think of God's love when they eat. And we can experience God's love when we pray. But many people just think, I'm praising God so I'm happy. They don't think of it as God loving us so we can experience His joy and love. So, so experience His love. The fourth level. The fifth level. Enjoying God's love. Every time when you drink water, thank God water is clear and it makes our throat comfortable. Oh. <laughs> so enjoy God's love. When you, when you pray, you experience peace and joy. You say, oh, I enjoy the peace and the joy. I enjoy God's help. I enjoy God. Now, more, many Christians don't enjoy God. When they think of God, they just think of responsibilities. And their failures. I hope when you think of God, it's like you think of ice cream. Do you like ice cream? Ice cream. Do you like some ice cream now? Ice cream. When you think of ice cream, you, how are you? You like it? You like it? Do you th when you think of God, do you say, oh God, I like you. Now the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit is that when you pray and all day long, you say, I like God. I, I enjoy God. You know, I enjoy God all the time. All the time I say to God, oh, I like you. When I'm preaching to you, I'm liking God at the same time. Okay, the sixth level. Is being motivated by God's love to respond to Him. To respond to God and say, God, I don't want to be with you all the time. Now we're not 
Look at my hand here. Your love is so great, so great, so great. And our love is so little. You still love us. Lord, help me to love you more and more and more. And help me to do the things God is happy with. Then I want to please you. And I know that any little thing I do for you, you're happy. If I give a cup of cold water to a little one, I will not lose the reward. You are very happy. So when I do evangelism, even when the person rejects me, God is still happy with me. Whenever I say I love you, God, God is happy. Isn't this like your first love with your you know, your wife or husband? Now for me and my wife now, even now it's like first love. When we go to sleep, very often I find her looking at me. <laughs> I, was, you know, I, I closed my eyes already. I opened her eyes and she's looking at me. I said, tomorrow you have to wake up. I said, tomorrow you have to wake up early, go to sleep now. And she said, let me look at you longer, a little longer. My wife, my wife is always like that. And I want to say this. God is like that too. He's looking at you now. Tell the person next to you, God is looking at you with love now. Oh, yes, you. Yes, you loves me. Yes, you loves me. Ah, love, yes, Hallelujah. 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 I love you. Hallelujah. I hope you are motivated. Isn't that wonderful to live in the love of God like that? That all day long you enjoy life. Hallelujah! Yes, the Lord. Yes, oh, 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 Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the Bible says, Psalm 90, verse 14, Satisfy us early with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. When we are satisfied with the love of God, then we can rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Psalm 90, verse 14. Now please stand up now. And believe in God's love right now. Please stand up. Believe God is loving us right now. And talk to God. I love you, Lord. Think of God is right here now. Yes, Jesus.
Now, if there are some, a few, maybe, I can pray for you, you know, this few days I'll pray for you too. But at this point with the strong anointing of God, when the presence of God comes to us right now, it's easy for you to experience His love now. Anyone who wants to experience His love more, come forward, I'll pray for you. Oh, I'm 